What's up, everybody? Welcome to the LTC Bowling Show. I'm your host, J.R. Raymond. As always, every day, just because I love you guys. And I love to do this. I love talking about bowling. And today, we had an awful lot of requests for people that wanted to see the California bowling line done uh, in the How to Build an Arsenal uh, series of videos. So we're going to do the swag lineup today. Uh, for those of you watching on YouTube, I will put the uh, the actual spreadsheet up so you can see all the bowling balls in front of you. Um, and those for you listening on the podcast, um, I'm going to talk through it all so you don't even need to see anything. You're going to hear all the numbers. You're going to hear all the bowling balls out of my voice or my mouth, which has a voice, I guess. But that's what we're going to do. So we're going to line these up. We're going to figure out you know, which bowling balls do we need in our bag if we're going to be building a ball uh, arsenal based on the swag company here in a second so stay tuned and i'll be right back all right so building an arsenal now, for those of you who don't understand or know the number system, I'll go over it again real quick with you. But it is a, uh, it's based on the RG and the differential of the bowling ball. Now, if you don't know the RG or the differential, all you got to do is just go to the website or look on the boxes of the bowling balls, one or the other. If you don't know what the RG or the differential mean, uh, maybe we'll do a podcast and we'll explain it a little bit for you. But for now, um, try and look at other videos. I believe I explain it in other videos as well. So um, go look at the other videos and I'll do a podcast explaining it as well. So, uh, But for now, let's uh, go through the actual system. What we do is we try to take the RG minus the differential uh, and we do it as whole numbers. So for example, if we have a bowling ball that is a 247 RG and 047 differential, we subtract 47 from 247, which gives us a 200 as a whole number. So that would be the actual core strength uh, number. And then we got to take the cover into consideration as well. Now, if it's a solid, we're going to subtract six points. If it's a hybrid, we're going to subtract three points. And if it's a pearl, we're going to add six points. Now, there's a big difference between a solid and a pearl. I wanted to make sure there's enough points difference between them because a lot of companies now are making some pearls that are super strong and they're using a much stronger cores, which can give you a false, uh, a falsely low number that would... Um, wouldn't match up properly in the list. So I used to do it to where I think it was only plus three, but there wasn't enough of a spread between the solids and the pearls. So I, uh, I actually made it plus six instead of plus three. So if we're doing changing of surfaces, which that's going to be the question, people are going to ask, well, what about urethane? What about this? Uh, don't worry about urethane. You know what urethane's supposed to do. Uh, there's no reason to even need to put a number on urethane because they're they're all pretty much or pretty close to the same. They're all going to hook early, and they're all going to be fairly blah the rest of the way down the lane. Um, you're going to have your exceptions. You're going to have your your blitz from Motive. You're going to have the Purple Hammer, and then now this fast pitch from Storm. But they're they're not crazy. They're not crazy different than a urethane ball, and they're nothing close to a reactive ball. So a urethane ball is what it is. You know what the urethane balls are. You know where they fit. You don't have to put a number on those. You can if you want. You don't have to. Um, but basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to build an arsenal, either a three or six ball arsenal. You can do more. You can do less. You can do whatever you want. But I'm going to give you the basics for building a three and a six ball arsenal based on the numbers. Um, so when we look at what we actually have with the swag company, we have 17 bowling balls that fill their line. Um, and the surprise in this whole thing was they only had one hybrid, the Graffiti Icon, which is the brand new one, the one that just came out, um, which I'm doing a review on here shortly. Should be, uh, I'll do the review on either Thursday night or Friday, uh, and it'll probably post next week because I have so many in line already ready to be posted in the next couple of days, um, which we talked about a little bit. So uh, we're going to do those for sure. Um, later in the week, but we have 17 bowling balls in the line. So what we need to do is we need to fill some gaps. Now, what I usually suggest is with a solid bowling ball, you generally want it to be in the 190s. Now, when we're looking at this actual uh, lineup of solid bowling balls, it looked like they really were going for super strength. And 
I did a review today on the Show Me the Money. I already did one on the Big Bro Flexin, and I did one on the Incredible. And based on the numbers, they are very similar, all three of them, especially the Big Bro Flexin and the Show Me the Money. Uh, they are basically identical bowling balls from what I saw. Um, and I even said that. This, this is the first time I'm seeing the numbers on these, and I even said that in the review. I just did the Show Me the Money review, um, and it, I, I said it in the video that, man, this thing, it reminds me of the Big Bro Flexin. And that's why, sorry, kid's coming in the door, so you got some beeping. But that's why uh, these are real similar is because they've got identical numbers based on the cover and core. So we are uh, looking at one, two, uh, with the hip star. And the hip star, again, the hip star, I, it reminds me an awful lot of those two as well. And then the fantasy, the fantasy I haven't thrown. The incredible, I would say, uh, surprisingly, uh, wasn't as strong as this number shows. I thought it was actually a little bit weaker than this, but maybe it's because it's so strong it was using up energy, I'm not sure. But anyway, so running down this list on the solids, we have a Joker at 188, which is incredibly strong. Anything that gets into the 180s is, to, in my eyes, that's a, that's a crazy strong cover core combination. I generally don't like anything below like 194 or 195. Um, they force my angles to be too straight because they're so blah down lane. Now, to be honest, the Big Bro Flexin wasn't as blah down lane as the Show Me the Money. The Show Me the Money was was very lopy, um, and it, it, you could definitely tell it's meant to be a big, strong bowling ball. So these bowling balls, these types of numbers, it seems like they're really pushing towards the lower rev rate uh, league type bowlers, which is good. That's fine, um, but for someone like me, you know, I'm 465. Um, with low tilt, you know, so I'm not getting the ball down the lane already, uh, having big bowling balls like that, they don't look the greatest, although they definitely would be very good on a shorter condition or when I really want to play straight angles and, you know, playing further right. These big, strong bowling balls are perfect for that. So I definitely will keep them around for those times when I do see the short patterns. Um, the incredible was uh, 189, and then we come up to the Fantasy, which is 191, and then we have those three balls in a row, Big, Blur, Big Bro Flexin', Show Me the Money, and a Hip Star, all at 192, and then we take a little bit of a leap up, and we go to 199 with a YOLO, uh, and then the Swagger at 201, you know, so that YOLO and Swagger are more like solid pieces that I would like in my arsenal because they are a little bit cleaner solid. I like to see the ball get through the front just a little bit better. Um, I would always keep a 191 or 192 in my bag for the exact situation I just said with being able to play straighter or absolutely needing something that's going to start digging in the oil. Um, that's when I will have one of those balls around with me. Um, and then we come over to the hybrid. We got, Like I said, we got that one single hybrid, that graffiti icon at 195. And over in the pearls, uh, we got a bundle of balls that fit in that 2-0 range. And then we only have two that got into that higher range, which if I'm being honest, as a company, I think swag needs to kind of spread their wings a little bit. Uh, and I know it's probably a little bit more difficult being made in Korea. I think they're probably, uh, I, I, I don't know enough about the company. I don't know if they... Um, if they're an American company being made in Korea or if it's actually a Korean company uh, that's actually just selling in America. I'm not sure. I need to get a little bit of details. For those of you who are California Bowling fans, uh, I know California LLC is based out of California, so maybe it is an American company that just makes them and has them made in Korea. I'm not for sure. So if you do know, send me a message on uh, on the podcast. Make sure to send me a voice message on there uh, or on the YouTube channel. Just make sure to comment below or send a message or whatever you need to do there. Um, but if I'm being them, if I'm being completely honest and critical of them, I think they need to spread their wings a little bit more, and I think they need to have um, less super strong bowling balls and have – you know, a few that fit a little bit higher numbers in the solids, and then you need a few that fit higher numbers in the pearls. Because what I see is I see an awful lot of really strong pearls and a lot of really strong solids and only one hybrid. So I would like to see some like uh, like IQ Tour type numbers, some of those 226, 223 type range. Um, I think the YOLO Pearl is the right idea at that 212, but I think you can even go just a little bit more than that. So you can get some pearls that have a little bit lower differential um, that can keep, you know, maybe get in like a like a 252030. Uh, uh, so, you know, so make it a pearl and that gets you 
you know, up in the upper 220s, you know, for a number, which would be a good, good solid base right there, I think, for a pearl. Because, uh, you know, a lot of the pearls, again, I think they are basing everything on trying to sell to the league base, which is 100% what they should be doing. Um, but not everybody has that, you know, big giant puddle of oil in the middle of the lane, you know, so uh, they don't really have a whole lot of bowling balls that can go to for, you know, with the lane conditions that are hooking an awful lot. Uh, so I think they just, just come out with some, you know, higher number solids, some maybe weaker core solids, weaker core pearls, uh, and, and they'd be able to hit the, hit the spectrum just a little bit more. But if I'm building an arsenal for myself, uh, I'm taking, and I'm probably going to go, if I'm going to, I'm going to do a six ball arsenal first. So I would take like a one, nine, two. Uh, so go with like the big bro flexing or a show me the money. And then I would probably put in either a YOLO or a swagger. We'll just call it a YOLO with that one. So we have a one, nine, two and a one, nine, nine. And then, um, you could even throw in that graffiti in there as a hybrid. So you have that one ball in the hybrid and then I would do three pearl. Um, so that gives me six balls total. So I would go with like the big bro galaxy at 200. That gives me a super strong, um, Pearl. You go with like an incredible hero at 205. That gives me, you know, five more points up. And then I would go with like a YOLO Pearl or even as high as that Holic, which is 242. So I guess I didn't do the rundown on the numbers for you guys, did I? It's the big bro galaxy at 200, the no graffiti at 201, graffiti Pearl at 202, incredible hero at 205, big bro burn up Pearl urethane at 205. And again, that one's urethane. Don't get fooled by the strong number. So be, just because it's 205, uh, it doesn't mean it's actually that strong of a ball. It is a typical urethane ball. So it's going to hook early, and it's going to basically bail the rest of the way. It's urethane. That's what they do. Um, so don't get caught up on that number when it comes to urethane. Uh, and then you got your Fantasy Star at 206, your YOLO Pearl at 212, and then your Holic at 242. Um, so, like I said, if I'm doing a six-ball arsenal, I'm doing a Big Bro Flexin and a YOLO, uh, the Graffiti Icon, and then I'm doing a Big Bro Galaxy, the Incredible Hero, and then something like a YOLO Pearl, I would think. So, it gives me uh, a bunch of numbers. So, that gives me a 200. Or let's go from the low. It gives me 192 up to 199, uh, and then I have a, a hybrid, which is in between those, at 195. And then that gives me 200 for the Big Bro Galaxy. That gives me a 205 and then a 212 for the Yolo Pearl. So I've got from 192 all the way up to 212. Uh, so 20 point difference there uh, between all six bowling balls. So that gives me a good gap. That gives me a good little array of options. Um, and based on how I do things, I only use two layouts on my actual arsenal for uh, the events that I bowl. Um, I use you know, my standard pin-up layout, which is a 55 by 5.5 by 30. And then I have my pin-down layout, which is, I believe I said it, it's 55 by 4.5 by 85. So that puts the pin well below my middle finger, uh, almost in the bridge, or almost between between the two fingers in low. So almost kind of like a, like a Rico layout, uh, but not quite, obviously. But anyway, so that's that's kind of what I'm doing there. And then if you're going to do like a three ball arsenal, I feel like you could go, you know, you could go, you could go a variety of different ways. You could just go straight across and just say, I'm going to put that 195 graffiti icon in there, that hybrid. And then I'm going to have, um, maybe I don't need something super strong. So I put the swagger in there. So I go 195, 201, and then I can go to a YOLO Pearl at 212 or a Holic at 242. So then I have a, a 190 covered, I have a 20 covered, and then I have, you know, a Pearl in the higher numbers covered. You know, you do something like that. Or if you want to go lower, if you need stronger pieces, you can go like Big Bro Flexin at 192 or even a Fantasy at 191. And then you go with the Graffiti Icon at 195. And then you go with something like a like a Incredible Hero at 205. You know, so that gives you, again, three different spectrums, uh, three different areas that you can, you know, create, uh, you know, different types of motion throughout you know, throughout the lane more or less. So, uh, you know, take this however you want. I mean, I, I want you guys to be able to look at the numbers of bowling balls and be able to walk into a pro shop and say, look, these are what I have. This is what I need. I need a ball in this area, you know. So 
most pro shops now, I shouldn't say most, but some have watched the videos on this building an arsenal stuff. And I know a lot of pro shops that are actually using the system because it makes sense. It makes things easier for the bowlers to be able to put numbers, put an actual number and scale the bowling balls a little bit easier than just saying, okay, well, I threw this ball and I think it's a, it's an eight out of 10, you know, like the hook rating and stuff. Like I just, I feel like those can be so skewed based on what you're bowling on. So if we can scale, scale these just based on exactly what you have without even bowling on anything now because you got to remember what you're bowling on is going to make every bowling ball react a little bit different so a day where your your big strong ball is you know hooking the entire lane you get on a different pattern and all of a sudden it's going straight but yet your weaker stuff is hooking the most you know it, it just it's so pattern specific it's different depending on what you're bowling on you know so I'm not saying, you know, take it with a grain of salt. I'm saying just be open-minded when you're getting to a bowling center and you're, you're you're trying to determine what exactly, you know, you want to um, you know, you what you what you think you're going to see. I don't want you to go in saying, "Okay, this is my strongest ball. This is going to hook more than everything." What I want you to do is I want you to to go to a practice session if it's like a regional or something. Go to practice session, throw some balls. Um, with some strong stuff, throw some balls with some weak stuff and, you know, determine, you know, are my, is my weak stuff hooking more than my strong stuff? If so, then you know that uh, more likely, more than likely your weaker stuff is actually storing a little bit more energy and it's, it's curving more down lane. And then your big stuff, your strong stuff is burning up its energy and it's just looking like it's going straight. So the times when those big, like I've had people that are like, man, I drilled that volatility uh, from 900 global because of your video, it hooked so much for you. And mine went straight. Well, it's not really going straight. It's more giving you the illusion that it's going straight because it's burning up. And based on the layout, did you go one extreme or did you go the other? Did you go max flare or did you go, you know, weaker? Where I went weaker to give that ball and cover the opportunity to store a pinch of energy and not use it all up in the front. Um, if you went super strong and you're bowling on something that already hooks, the thing's going to hit the lane and it's going to hook immediately. And then it's going to give you the illusion that it's not hooking the rest of the way. You know, so you got to be careful with some of this stuff. Um, and go one way or the other. Um, so I, I don't know. That's just kind of how I see it. If, if, you know, let me know what you think, message me, you know, send me a message on, uh, in, in anchor, you know, send me a voice message through there. I, I will listen to it and I will respond to it. Um, so, or send me a comment. I don't always get the comments in YouTube. There's so many of them most times that I have a hard time getting to all of them. Uh, and there's so many silly comments that I'm just, sometimes I just shy away and say, eh, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to touch that with a 10 foot pole. Um, but, uh, yeah, the best way to get a hold of me is through anchor, head over to anchor.fm, uh, and go to my channel, the, uh, LTC bowling show. Obviously you're on it right now and just send the, hit that send message button. Um, and, and also if you really want to make sure I respond, hit that, uh, hit that support button, because if you support the channel, I'll make sure that, you know, I respond to anything and everything that you send. So, um, that's all I got for you today. I just wanted to real quick do the, I guess it wasn't that quick. We're almost 20 minutes in, but I wanted to do that swag line up for you. And then tomorrow or the next day, we'll, you know, we'll do some of the other LLC, the California Bull and LLC, you know, brands as well. And then we're going to continue to go through all the other brands. We still haven't done all the Brunswick ones, you know, track Columbia 300 Ebonite. We haven't done all that. Oh, which reminds me, I just got an arrow in the mail, the new Ebonite ball. I just got one in the mail. So I'm going to drill that bad boy up. Uh, we're bowling on 43 feet this weekend. So I'll drill it up, see what it looks like Friday, and uh, take it out there, do the review, do all that good stuff, and see what we got. Unfortunately, it is a PBA event, so I can't use my swag stuff. I can't use, you know, any. I can't use my my bloody ocean. That sucks because that ball is great on longer patterns, you know. So, uh, those of you California bowling people, you let me know when you're going to be PBA registered, and I'll make sure I have some of these in my bag because uh, you definitely have some good equipment. It's definitely worth keeping in my bag. Those of you who don't use a ton of the, the, the California Bowl and stuff and you're afraid to try it because it's not PBA registered, if you're not going to bowl PBA events, you might as well try it. It's definitely worth it. They've got some great equipment, uh, especially if you're looking for stronger equipment. They have really good, strong equipment. Um, and it is all USB-C approved, so it's usable everywhere except the except PBA. So it's not like you can't use it. It's not like it's an illegal ball or anything. Most people get it confused, and they think because it's not PBA registered that you can't use it. That's just not true you only cannot use it in pba events you can use it anywhere else you know in in your league practice open bowling whatever it is any other tournament 
uh, obviously I won with the Bloody Ocean in a tournament, you know, so it's not that you can't use it. It's just you can't use it in the PVA events. So just keep that in mind. But I'm out of here, guys. I'm going to get rolling. Um, and uh, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, follow along, hit that like, comment, share, do all that good stuff. Share it along. Share this podcast. Share the, the YouTube video. You know, just because I want to spread the word a little bit, we'll have these conversations a little bit more and try to be a little bit more educational. There's just not a lot of education in the bowling world as far as um, as far as this goes. You know, there's a ton of people that are, you know, poking tips out there and, you know, trying to help you get a little bit better at bowling, which is great. Uh, I just, I'm trying to kind of broaden this out or spread the, spread my wings a little bit with all this kind of stuff. So if you could help me out, share the podcast for me, and I'd really appreciate that. But until next time, guys, I'm out of here. We'll see you guys later. Take care.